Okay, so here is a, a video that is a sort of a summary of symbolization and predicate logic. Here we have nine sentences. Well, actually we have seven sentences plus two gaps where there should be two more sentences. Those are sentences which you should be able to construct because sentence three and four and sentence five and six, these are couplets. I said that on the test, I will give you an English sentence, either like not all frogs are green or no frogs are green, and I will ask you to provide two symbolizations plus another English sentence, which means the same thing as the original sentence. So that's what I've got in these two particular cases here. All right, but I would like to say that if you know how to symbolize these nine sentences, you know the foundations of everything that we're doing in symbolization. This is how it all begins. In fact, uh, I would invite you to, uh, to pause the video and symbolize these nine sentences, or at least make an attempt at it, and then we'll talk about them, and I think that will be uh, more useful than if you just watch the video. So I will now pause for a second. All right, I paused. Uh, so now let's symbolize these sentences. All frogs are green. This is a standard universal sentence. We know that when you're looking at sentences to symbolize, you should the first question you should always ask yourself, is it universal, is it existential, or is it a singular sentence? The answer to this question is almost always absolutely trivial, um, but in conceptually, that's how you should be working. So as soon as you see all frogs are green, that's clearly a universal sentence. So you want to use the universal quantifier, and now I would invite you to go immediately to the parentheses and say universal quantifier standardly goes with arrows. So let me give myself that much structure. All I need to do is put fx arrow gx. And that's all that there is to it. How do we read this? This says for all x, if x is a frog, then x is green. All right. Um, now, next sentence. Some frogs are green. Universal, existential, or singular. Clearly existential sentence. So we put an existential. Existentials go with ampersands. We get fx ampersand gx. There is an x. x is a frog and x is green. All right. Main point. Universals go with arrows. Existentials go with ampersands. Does this mean you could never have a sentence that has a universal and an ampersand? Or an existential and an arrow? No, you definitely can have such things. These are just the standard forms, and that's what we're focusing on at this point in the class, is standard forms. Okay, uh, next sentence. Not all frogs are green. Notice the relationship between one and three. This is just all frogs are green with the word not in front of it, and that's exactly what the symbolization is going to be. The symbolization from up above with a dash in front of it. Not for all x. If x is a frog, then x is green. But now here's the interesting thing. I need Now we want to produce another symbolization plus another sentence that means the same thing but uses the opposite quantifier concept. Well, I sometimes think it's easier to come up with the symbolization first. The symbolization looks like there is an x. Existentials, of course, go with ampersands. But we bring down the fx and the gx just as it is. What happens to the dash? It moves over to here. If you study what's going on in this case in terms of the proof rules, what we're doing is kind of like a combination of quantifier exchange plus arrow exchange. But anyway, this is the, this is the sort of pattern and the type of relationship between the two symbolizations that you'll see every single time. Now, what's the sentence that goes over here? You can read it off of the symbolization. This says there is an x, fx, ampersand, dash, gx. What does that mean? There is an x such that x is a frog and x is not green. Well, this should start with some, and it should say some frogs are not green. Some frogs are not green. It's easy. That's all you have to do. No frogs are green. What are you supposed to think immediately when you see no? No means what? No means not some. 
No does not mean not all. No means not some. Not some is symbolized with dash there is an X. As I mentioned in class, we do not say not some in English. Instead, we say no, none, nothing, or not any. And there's some other things, but, but these are the standard forms. So I've emphasized that these are what you should be on the lookout for. So we see that no, we immediately say to ourselves, this means dash there is an X, FX ampersand GX. Now, what's the other symbolization look like? Well, it has to start with the universal. Universals go with arrows, bring down the FX, move the dash in front of the GX. Notice the symmetry between this pair and this pair. Oh gosh, why did I circle that? That looks just absolutely awful. Uh, what's the sentence that we want to put over here? It's going to be all frogs. Now as a first pass, you might say to yourself, this means all frogs are not green. But in class, what I have emphasized is that when you have all at the front of the sentence and not here, that creates an ambiguity in the meaning of this sentence. I want for the sentence to mean that no frogs are green. But if I tell you all frogs are not green, and I just sort of say that in a normal tone of voice, it actually sounds more like some frogs are not green. In terms of its meaning, it seems to sound more like this. It turns out that we can fix that problem if instead of using not, we try to say this with a negative prefix or a negative suffix. And so what I'm encouraging you to do is to say all frogs are non-green. This is something I will have talked about in class a couple of times here, um, but when you've got a sentence that starts with all, you want to avoid the use of not here to avoid a notorious ambiguity in English. So all frogs are non-green would be the best choice in this particular case. All right, a couple more sentences. Let me do a little bit of cleaning up. I've created such a mess over here. Um, get rid of all that stuff. Get rid of this here. No, I think I got rid of a little bit too much. Um, undo that clear, please. There we go. Close enough. Okay, now, we're up to sentence 8 here. No, we're not. We're up to sentence 7. Number 7 says only frogs are green. Is only frogs are green a universal, an existential, or a singular? It is a, sing it is a, it is a universal sentence. Universals have universal quantifiers with arrows. But what's the relationship between only and all? Only is a reversed all. So what we're going to get here is actually GX arrow FX. What only frogs are green really means is that all green things are frogs. All green things are frogs. Okay. Uh, number eight, all and only. What's the trick for all and only? For all and only, you want to put the double arrow. So you can say FX double arrow GX, or you could say GX double arrow FX, it doesn't matter. All and only is just like if and only if. That's our exception to the rule that says that universals go with arrows. Universals here goes with a double arrow. What about Kermit is a green frog? This sentence, of course, is a singular sentence. It is about a named individual. Since it's about a named individual, we are not going to use quantifiers. Instead, we're going to use the name. Uh, what are we saying about Kermit? He's a green frog. So what this amounts to is Kermit is green, capital G, lowercase k, ampersand, Kermit is a frog. All right. Remember, singular sentences don't use quantifiers. All right. If you understand these nine sentences, you're well on your way to being able to do symbolization and predicate logic.